most of it. What's up, YouTube? HPJ here, and of course, I'm coming back at you guys with a deck profile this time. It's a combination of two of some very aggro and aggressive archetypes. I'm being taking a look at Dinosaur True King. So this is a deck that I've been building, um, if you guys haven't seen already through Instagram, uh, that I really have been focusing on a lot of various decks to pretty much get a feel and flow of the game again, as well as give you guys some bit of variety. And the Dinosaur deck itself uh, was actually a spark to me because of how aggressive the deck itself is and it has a lot of aggression and it has a lot of key points to itself and if you're a fan of aggro this is kind of the deck that you could easily take a look at now um the whole scenario of me adding the true kings to it is that true kings had a lot of destruction upon their summon or destroying cards in the hand to, to, to summon themselves to the field and with that in combination with a lot of the dinosaur support just makes it a good combo, and I really wanted to take advantage of that. And I hopefully, well, hopefully I deliver. All right, without further ado, you guys, I'm not going to waste any more time. Let's actually take a look at my build of True King Dino. So it starts off with the Dinosaur Monsters. I'm running three copies of Overtech Quill Atlas. Then I'm running three copies of Mistlesaurosaurus, uh, Soul Eating Overraptor, and... Uh, Agrosaurus. Then for the two of, I'm running two copies of Ultimate Conductor Tyranno, two copies of Baby Ferrosaurus, two copies of Paraterodon, and then for the one of, I'm running one copy of Dinosaur Wrestler Pancreo Tops, uh, one copy of Giant Rex, and one copy of Jurek or Alo. For the True Kings, I'm running just simply two copies of Ignamas. The Vanisher and one copy of Lithro Gem, Lithro uh, Gem, the Destroyer. Then for the rest of the monsters, I'm running three copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring and one copy of Mega Phantom Beast O Lion. Then for the spell cards, three copies of Double Evolution Pill, three copies of Fossil Dig, three copies of Lost World, one copy of. Dr of Dragonic Diagram, one copy of Set Rotation, and one copy of Terraforming. For the extra deck, I am running one copy of Trishula, Dragon of the Ice Barrier, one copy of Barrel Load, Savage Dragon, one copy of Material Metal, Marcher. Then for the Exceeds, I got one copy of True King of All Calamities, one copy of Evil Sword Lagia, one copy of Evil Sword Dolka, one copy of Tornado Dragon, and then for all my exceeds, I'm running, I mean, Leak Monsters, I'm running one Salamaran Great uh, Al Mirage, one copy of Link Cross, one copy of Crystal Needle Fiber, of course, the Nightmare Engine, one Nightmare Cerberus, one Nightmare Phoenix, and one Nightmare Unicorn. Then one copy of Mecha Phantom Beast Aurora Dawn, and then one copy of Barrel Sword Dragon. So, the whole concept is a combination of both Dinosaur and True Kings. When there is need for destruction, it will happen, and then it helps bring more monsters to the board. So the first key component of the deck, of course, is these two little guys here. The baby Sarasaurus and the baby Pterodon. So when these monsters are destroyed by card effects, you can sit in Sun to the Graveyard, you can set to summon monsters, dinosaur monsters uh, to the field. For baby Sarasaurus, it's any level for a lower dinosaur, while baby Pterodon special summons any level for a higher dinosaur monster. Although the monster that Paradon summons can't attack, however, that is a great way to get a lot of the floating monsters onto the field. Because two of your big floats happen to have abilities that also require monsters to be on the field. Um, that being Soul Over Raptor, who, when it's normal or special, can take any dinosaur monster from your deck and either add it to your hand or send it to the graveyard. Then, it can target a level 4 lower dinosaur on the field, destroy it, and then set summon a dinosaur from your graveyard in defense position. The great thing about that is Soul Over Raptor can get a lot of the cards, a lot of your dinosaurs back to the board, whether they're in attack position or defense. Also, it doesn't have a restriction of level, so that helps in cases of when you need your big guy, 
uh, Ultimate Conductor Tyranno, or you can play around with uh, Overtech Quill Atlas. Uh, now, let's actually talk about Quill Atlas. So, Quill Atlas has the ability of destroying other dinosaur monsters on your field or in your hand in order to negate the activation of a spell, trap, or monster effect in destroying that card once it's negated. The, crazy, the great thing about Quill Atlas is that it's not even a, a hard summon. It's literally a great asset to get onto the field as soon as possible to where you can negate a lot of things. And... The other ability of this card is that when it's sent to the graveyard, you can pick up your evolution pills. And that's also a great thing to be doing because once you got to your evolution pill, you can just simply go straight for um, Ultimate Conductor Tyranno and you don't have to worry about going into his effect. Now, the other defensive card here is Missile Ceratosaurus, which can also be offensive and defensive. Um, the fact that this monster can protect your dinosaurs from being affected by card effects until the end of the turn by simply discarding it from your hand helps you out in terms of dealing with cards um, that would try to negate your effects or that would try to stop your monsters from doing things on the field um, in which, you know, it would mess up your opponent's plays. And the crazy thing about it was this is the monster that got, I believe it was limited or banned and that this was literally the reason why dinosaurs kind of fell off because this was one of their ways of dealing with a lot of things and then they went very aggro with a lot of their combinations but the funny thing also about this is how aggressive that even a pure dinosaur build or a dinosaur combination build did really take advantage of missile cerasaurus's defensive ability because it allows your other dinosaurs to do a lot of things themselves not to mention, this guy can social summon dinosaurs by simply banishing itself and multiple other dinosaur monsters in the graveyard to the field. Uh, simply by banishing the amount needed uh, based on that monster's level. So, it also was a great special summon. And I don't think it ignored any special summoning conditions. No, it didn't. But, hey, you got enough monsters in the graveyard that can be easily special summon. Because you can always get Overtech Quill Atlas and just have a dinosaur that can engage stuff. Then let's move on to Ultimate Conductor Tyranno. So, this is a monster that uh, has the ability to special summon itself by banishing two dinosaur monsters in your graveyard. Then during either player's turn, you can destroy a monster in your hand or in your field to change all face-up monsters your opponent controls to face down to Vince. When he attacks, uh, he can attack all monsters that your opponent controls once each. And then uh, those monsters that he swings at uh, are automatically sent to the to the graveyard if they're in defense position and your opponent will take a thousand this helps block combos in monsters who are trying to use their effects and trying to get other monsters on the field to link with or synchro with or fuse with then he can just ramp he can do what most dinosaurs do rampage and take things out so it's a great uh way to pretty much book of moon run stuff over and literally just have some fun um you know, just taking out your opponent as fast as possible. Like I said, the aggression comes with all these big, beefed-up dinosaurs. Because this is literally one of the highest-level dinosaurs uh, right now in terms of the main deck. Because it's a little 3,500 attacker. And most of them can't run over anything that literally is 35 or 30, yeah, 3,500 or up. Now, next to that, let's talk about the one of dinosaurs. We do have, of course... Um, Dino Wrestler Pancreatops. This is pretty much just a Cyber Dragon and then a Pop um, with this card. Also, part of the reason why it's at one because it would be easily abusable. Um, the Giant Rex simply special summons itself whenever it is banished. Then it gains 200 attack for each banished dinosaur. I can't attack directly, so you're kind of out of luck with that. But it does make a decent enough beat stick for someone that has 2,000 attack. It's funny. It's funny thing about that is because through the history of Yu-Gi-Oh, any level four monster that had more than eighteen, no, nineteen hundred attack that wasn't a normal monster, had a lot of regression to its ability, meaning that it had a lot of not regression, a lot of cost to its ability because you can just get a free floater like this um, in the game nowadays. Like the only way you can literally get this is by negating that monster's horrible conditional effect. With cards like Skill Dream, but unfortunately Skill Dream is out the picture because it's at one. 
And most, I mean, there are cards that negate effects that you can take advantage of. But, you know, it's just still shocking that 2020, and we still have some great level 4 beaters that can really do some damage. And this just happens to be one of them. Although it is still relegated to not, to having a condition attached to it to where it's not so broken um, that people can take advantage of multiples of it. The other one of, of course, is Jurek or Alo, and this is simply because it's a dinosaur tuner. Now, for the True Kings, we got True King um, Agnimadus, the Vanisher. So, destroy either two monsters from your hand or field. One of them must include a fire type. I mean, a fire attribute. Uh, now, the benefits of this is that if all the monsters you destroyed are fire, you can destroy a card on your opponent's side of the field. Then, if this card is destroyed by your opponent's card effect, you can add a non-fire urine monster from your deck to your hand. Primarily, it helps you search out for Leth, uh, Lethrogen, who is pretty much one of the other essentials to this deck. Because when this card is supposed to summon, uh, when this card is summoned through its effect, you can destroy, uh, what is it? You can just, oh, you can hit your opponent's extra deck. And then clear them with three monsters. The crazy thing about that is, is this card is at one simply for that reason. Because there's so many ways to abuse ridding your opponent of their extra deck. And then taking out those monsters. Especially um, nowadays where most decks do benefit from their extra deck. With Lantho Jim, that was, he was literally a great way to go. Because he was even banned uh, actually because of how aggressive his ability was. And with the True King and True Draco... Destroying other cards to summon themselves was one of their big key components. And that's why a lot of people enjoy playing the deck so aggressively. Because it was, what, a variation anti-meta. It didn't need its extra deck. It locked out extra deck support. And it had a lot of lockdown and a lot of hold to itself. Now, when it comes to the combination between a dinosaur, it's simply a massive amount of destroying cards from the hand, taking advantage of those destroying monsters' abilities, and then bringing out, like I said, these giant aggressive beat sticks for a lot of aggression. Then, uh, the other monsters to talk about, because uh, I completely forgot about him, is the uh, Jeweled Beast Agrosaurus. So this is another monster that can also pick up the double evolution pill, or just evolution pills in general, um, simply by it destroying a dinosaur monster that's face up on your side of the field. You can easily go get either a reptile, sea serpent, or winged beast monster that's the same level as the monster you destroyed, or you can grab the evolution pill spell card from your deck to your hand. So this is how you go get double evolution pill because it's an evolution pill card. Not to mention, this card can also be destroyed by, you know, other card effects and then have its abilities triggered. Uh, which I think is to destroy... Oh, yeah, when, well, it can be special summoned by other dinosaurs and then you can trigger um, its ability to pop another dinosaur in search. Which I thought was the other way around. But, no, this is also a great essential in terms to quote Atlas because you have two cards that can search for the evolution pills. The other cards to talk about, of course, are the Ash Blossom and Joy Spring, and that's, of course, the Hand Trap of Choice. Simply negate cards that will either special summon from the deck, add cards from the deck, or send cards from the deck to the graveyard, which, each of those cases, decks in the game right now do. Then we have the uh, Mecha Phantom Beast O-Lion. This is simply just a token creator and a great way to get around with Crystal, crystal Needle Fiber, in addition to Ash Blossom and Director Alo. For the spell cards, we do have to talk about the double evolution pill. Banish a dinosaur monster and a non-dinosaur from your hand or graveyard. Uh, set a summon level 7 or higher dinosaur from your hand or deck, ignoring the summoning conditions. So you can easily go get your ultimate conductor, Tyranno, ignoring the summoning conditions attached to it. You can also get Quill Atlas if you want to get... Pretty much you have two giant monsters you can easily get with this card. Not to mention this fills up a lot of additional effects as well. Because you can help out with, um, with a giant Rex is a, you know, 200 games for each banished dinosaur. You have another, you have additional stuff to set up to the summon of, um, Quill Atlas. You just have a lot of things you can easily get, um, with this, with the help of this card. And then having to circumvent to, in the biggest, you know, payback is, bam, here's this giant dinosaur monster that can take out your opponent's stuff in Book of Mooning. 
uh, three copies of Fossil Dig. This is just a search for all the low-level guys. We have Lost World. So Lost World, um, the field spell pretty much helps generate, you know, the, the Jurek egg tokens. Then you can take advantage of the tokens with cards like Soul Eating Overraptor, destroying them, and then uh, having the ability to summon some more dinosaurs to the field. Also, the tokens are the only thing that can be targeted by your by card effects at that point. So your opponent really has to be careful what things they try to use because the tokens will become the target. So a lot of cards they use that will say specific monsters of an archetype or a specific type won't be effect won't be useful till the token is removed. So um, the other thing is some normal monster stuff, but we don't have any uh, normal monsters in the deck, surprisingly enough. Then I'm running one copy of Dragonic Diagram that's simply to help get the destruction of the cards in the hand to help go get the true kings and then that triggers off the monsters effects in the hand that correspond with being short the card effect. Uh, the set rotation, just to simply give my opponent either the Lost World or the Diagram, and it won't hurt me because with Lost World, all my monsters are dinosaurs, so they won't lose any attack and defense, and I can play off the tokens that are being summoned. The Terraforming helps me search for either Lost World or for Dragonic Diagram if I can get to the set rotation. For the extra deck, Trishula, Dragon of the Ice Bears, I just wanted an easy level I use the Synchro Summon in addition to the Barrel Savage Dragon. Uh, but Trisha, of course, can hit the hand, the field, and the graveyard of your opponent and simply banishing one of each of those cards from the selected areas. Then we have the Barrel Savage Dragon. So what you do with this monster is that you're supposed to take advantage of both Crystal Needle Fiber's effect and the effect of Link Cross. You're really much trying to generate enough tokens in order to Synchro Summon into your Barrel Savage. Then you take advantage of the token monsters by putting them onto the... You take advantage of whatever link monster you use you have in the graveyard and attach it to the Barrel Savage Dragon and giving it its, its counters. Then it can negate the uh, effects of cards on the field once a turn by removing one of their counters. Um, it does gain half the attack of the equipped monster, which is great because it just beefs it up even more and it can just help you take out a lot of things as well then um i'm running one of the i'm running the uh material metal mercher this is in combination with crystal needle fiber so i have a synchron i have a tuner on the field i have all of these uh monsters that i have access to to help me synchro into that monster and there's so many different token cards token making cards right now in the game that help fit into this as well. For this, for the exceeds, I got both Dulka and Logia, which is funny because they're not dinosaur, but they need dinosaur monsters for their exceed summon. Uh, Logia is the Solemn Judgment, and Dulka is the Divine Wrath. Then we have True Kings of All Calamity, just another big beat stick that can easily be made with some more beat sticks on the field, and has its ability to remove monsters of the same attribute, and it prevents monsters of the attribute um, actually declare to not be able to use their effects while uh, while it's on the field. So, a lot of negation there. Then we have Tornado Dragon to remove spells and trap cards. And then I guess it's pretty simplified with most of the Link monsters. Um, you have uh, Al Mirage, just to be here in case uh, Normal Summon gets screwed over. We have Link Cross, which helps us create these tokens, and then those tokens, even though they can't be used for Link Summon, you're going to use them for Synchroing. So you can help get out Trishula, or you can help get out Barrel Savage. Then you have Crystal Needle Fiber, you have enough, I have all these different tuners, it helps me get out some of my extra deck monsters. Well, it helps me go into my um, Metal Mercher, and in that way I can Synchro into Barrel Savage, or I can Synchro into Trishula, and take advantage there. In terms of removal, I have Nightmare Cerberus for monsters in the main monster zone, Phoenix for all the spells and traps, and then Bounce with Unicorn. Uh, then we have Mecha Phantom Beast um, Auroradon. This is another monster to help me make tokens. And in combination with um, how the token setup is right now in the game, you take advantage of any token makers that you possibly can before they get axed by Konami. So, <laughs> this is one monster that I'd be definitely taking advantage of. And if you can get this to Barrel Savage Dragon as soon as possible, there's three negations on Barrel Savage Dragon. 
And then, of course, last but not least, is the big guy himself, Barrel Sword Dragon. This is just an additional monster to have in the extra deck if you want to just go ahead, summon a big monster, and just ram into your opponent's cards. So, that is pretty much it for my Dinosaur Tree King deck profile. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. HBJ signing out. Take care.